Microsoft Lists tutorial, how to use Microsoft Lists for beginners. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how you can get started with Microsoft Lists as a beginner. Microsoft 365 offers a great infrastructure for everyone that is looking for any and everyone that might be looking for a tool that helps them manage their personal lives, their work lives, their work and personal life balance if they're trying to do their educational work over here. Everything from Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Teams, ClipChamp, Forms, all of it is included. So let's get started with one of the applications or elements of the 365 infrastructure called Lists. Although it might seem like something that is very simple, creating a list, there is so much more that you can learn within. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is you're just going to log on to your Microsoft 365 account. Now, once you have logged on to your Microsoft 365 account, you can click on apps on the left. And once you do, you can see some of the applications that are provided by Microsoft 365. This includes the list application. You can see it over here and you can click on this to open it in a new tab. Now, Microsoft 365 has the lists application available for Windows as well as Mac OS. So if you're looking to install this as a native application within your desktop device, you can easily do that as well. Now, if you're just using it in a browser, you can just preview it over here. And once you do open up a preview, you can see a favorite section. Then you can click on create new list to start building your new list. Now, not only can you create lists as a simple checklist, there are different templates that enable you to manage your lists more effectively, including things like issue trackers, employee onboarding, event itineraries, recipes, and much more. But if you're looking to create a list from pre-existing files, you can do that as well, or you can import CSV files as well. Click on blank list over here to get started with your new list. For us, let's say that I want to build my recipes. And once I do have my recipes, I can add a description for pasta recipes, and then I can choose a color, and then I can also choose an icon. After you've done that, click on create over here to proceed with your first list. Now, once you create your first list, you can proceed with creating different list items. Now, within a list, you can click on add list item and add a title. But other than titles, you can create any type of column that you want. Within any list, for example, if I have something like a recipe for red sauce pasta, so this is my red sauce pasta recipe. Now, instead of having just a blank list over here, I can click on add column and I can choose the type of, I can add multiple lines of text. Okay. And I'll click on next and I will name this full recipe and then I will click on save. Now this would be a column that allows me to add the full recipe of the title. Then after that, I'll add another column where for my pastas, I want the choice of what type of pasta shape am I using? So this is pasta shape. And then in the choices, I want it to either say bow tie. I have bow tie, spaghetti. And then let's say I have um, bow tie, spaghetti, and macaroni like this. And then I can click on add choice and add another choice. Then I can click on save over here. And just like that, a new column will be added. Now, this is not going to serve as a simple checklist, but it can serve as a complete way for you to categorize and organize all types of items and tasks. You can click on add column to add things like date and times, as well as people, numbers, yes and no's, hyperlinks, images, lookups, and average ratings. So let's say if when it comes to numbers, I might want to add approximate time. So time to make, and then I can click on save. And over here, it's only going to be a number field where people can only add the time it is going to take to complete a certain recipe, to complete a certain type of pasta. Now, so on and so forth, you can add columns and add different numbers, yes or no field, and much, much more. Now you can even click on add field over here and create different types of views. This includes list views, calendar views, gallery views, as well as board views. And you can choose to make this a public view or a private view. 
and you can also enter a view name. Now from here, you will see on the top, you have the option to share your lists. This allows you to not only build simple lists, but you can build project managers, you can build task managers over here as well. You have the option to export as a CSV, and you even have different rules that you can create. Click on create rule over here, and whenever you have a rule, this enables you to add different types of notifications, deletions, and item modifications. You can also add alerts and you can manage your alerts. On the top right, you have the option to manage access and share links. So these share links can either be editable links or view only links. So certain people can view the lists, whereas you can give certain people to actually edit the lists. Now, if we go back into Microsoft lists over here and we click on new list, I'm going to show you guys a few of the templates. So for example, if we go into asset managers, you will see this is the type of list that has been created as an asset manager where they have device photos, asset tags, statuses, manufacturers, models, asset types, and colors. All of these fields from status to color are just added as a drop-down field where people can select the answer or type the answer. And you have several different types of list examples, or you could say template examples that are going to work just as well. This includes things like product support metrics, recipe trackers, expense tracker, work progress tracker. You guys can see the work progress tracker. I'm going to just show you guys what it looks like when it's fully functional and how you can build one your own or customize this one to better fit your work needs. So over here, this is a work progress tracker and this has different groupings as well. So it is grouped by priority and also grouped by the work item progress. And then you have a simple section which allows you to view all items. In the all item section, you have a description for the item, the category that it belongs to. So whether it's related to the marketing department, the planning department, research department, the progress it is in, whether it's in progress, whether it is completed or hasn't been started yet then you can also add a priority so what type of priority this has what is the start date the due date the person this is assigned to and any further notes can be added over here this allows you to keep in depth tracking of any of the work that is being done within your organization and this is how you can get started with microsoft lists now this is just a desktop application you can further use this in a more optimized way and get higher productivity efficiency and effectiveness with the full application downloaded within your device to access the full application simply head on over to microsoft 365 and once you go into microsoft 365 you are going to go into lists and click on download application. I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you did find this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or queries, make sure to leave those in the comment box down below. I would love to know what you guys have to say.